Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is 15 reasons I use to cull images while I'm importing into Lightroom. This is the things that I think about and why I delete certain images. And I think this will be helpful and one of my workshop participants asked for this a couple of weeks ago. So the number one reason that I will delete an image, and image is blurry. And here the image is blurry and I cut off its feet. So that has two things against it. So that would get deleted and not imported into Lightroom. This image, the feather detail here on the head is blown out, it's overexposed. So here's another situation where I would delete this image because it's just not gonna cut it. I'm not gonna be able to save the highlights. Now the bird is small, so I put it right in the center of the frame so it would be super sharp. And I knew I was gonna crop it in post-processing. I didn't want to get any closer to the bald eagle because I thought it would fly away. Here's a great example of there's no highlight in the eye, the bird's in the shade, the sun's just coming up, nice light behind the bird. I'm actually looking towards the west and so the sun's coming up in the east and usually that means that there's lavenders and pinks in the western sky. A little bit of fill flash would have lightened up the bird, cut through the shadows, put a highlight in the eye and it would have been a usable and pretty cool image. And here I've cut off the wings. I, quite, I do this a lot. I cut off the wings or I cut off feet because I'm trying to focus on the eye or something and I just delete those because generally what will happen is I'll see that I'm cutting off the wings, the head or the feet and then I'll correct it and I'll get a couple of good images that are saveable and usable. Now when I have a bad point of view, I'm looking down on the bird. I delete these images because I really should have been eye level with the bird. I should have kneeled down. I should have dropped to one knee so that I could be eye level with the bird and then the image would have looked a lot better. When the background is super cluttered like this, I just delete the image. Now what I was trying to do taking the picture was put the red-tailed hawk right in the center and then I was thinking that I could fix the background somehow, but there's just so much clutter, so many branches, I can't fix it. So that goes into the trash can. The hand of man is in this picture in, in kind of some really bad ways and then there's just distracting background. So these are the ropes and the more of the trail of this stuff, it's just more out of focus, but it's distracting. This stuff is distracting and this is an image that would go to the trash trash can. And then the angle of the light is not quite good too. So now in this image, nice exposure, nice light on the bird, a little bit dark on the back, but I could probably lighten that up. But I don't like the fence and I don't like the white stuff in the background, the big white areas, which is probably more gulls or something. So I would throw this one away. And then here, this is the final image. And I knew this is what the image would look like when I took the picture. I have the hand of man in the picture here, but I knew I was gonna take this part off and then I was just gonna keep the bird and I knew I would have a pretty nice image. Sometimes the background just looks plain ugly and so I delete those images. And then sometimes you're gonna end up with like five, 10, 20 shots in a row that are pretty much all the same. Here's about six shots in a row, five or six shots in a row of this long billed curlew. And this one's gonna get deleted because I've cut off his feet. There's, you know, he's in the water, but you really can't see uh, where his feet are. Now he's raising his foot. That's a little bit better, but I still don't like it. I think this is my keeper out of all of them. Nice head angle, one foot is up, so that's pretty good. This one is eyes closed, both feet in the water. You see how this is a little bit better right here? If the leg goes into the water, it doesn't look like it's cut off or disappeared. But back here, if you've got a straight dark line across there and there's no water edge, there's just a little bit in there, then it looks like it's cut off. This is a little bit better, but I don't like the eye, so I'm gonna delete that one. Head angle up here is turned slightly away, so that's not a keeper. And same with this one. So I'm gonna keep uh, one out of five of those, and I'll be happy with that, that's pretty good. So here, this is a nice image of a black-bellied plover in winter plumage, but the light's coming in this way, and this part of his face is in the shade, so that doesn't work very well, so I would delete that image. Here's another example, same sort of thing. Head angle, the bird's turning away from me, so it's not not a keeper for that but when it turned away from me then all of its face went dark in the shade so that's a delete when the sun is shining down on the birds you get dark areas under the wings and then most of the time that's just not going to look very good so what I try to do is I try to take a few burst shots I'll take three four shots in a row and try to get the wings all the way up or all the way down to make this shadow disappear the other thing that I'll do is I'll try to move to the left here a little bit and shoot with my shadow pointing at the bird more and then this shadow here will disappear. It won't be obvious, and then it would have been a better photo. Whenever the sun is low on the horizon, it will also mitigate this dark shadow underneath the wings. Early morning light just after sunrise
sunrise is a great time to photograph birds if you think you're going to do a birds in flight so there's no dark shadows underneath the wings. And then sometimes the bird is just too small in the frame. So I thought I could come up with some kind of a composition, but it's so far away, it's just too small. And then here's another example. The birds in the shade, all of the super cool colors of the wood duck don't come out. A little bit of fill flash would have helped this and I could have probably saved it, but it's in the shade. Everything looks dull. It's dark, just not usable, not saveable. So that goes to the trash can as well. And then here's a couple of things in, wrong with this one. It's shot at ISO 3200, which is pretty high. And then there's also some fog or mist in the air. There's some atmospheric things going on. So the bird, it just looks unsharp because of the digital noise and the atmospheric conditions. And so here again, it gets deleted. There's some nice colors in this picture. There's a little bit of promise in it, but the birds are overlapping. And really we want to have the birds separated, especially when we're going to do silhouettes like this, because you want the birds to be separated and you want to be able to see the whole bird. If the birds were in flight, we would say that they were colliding with each other. And what we're trying to do is get some separation so each bird stands on its own. And then sometimes the light just comes from the wrong direction. So the light's coming from this way and all of this side is in the shade. I couldn't get around to the other side of the bird so that I could get better light on it because there was a fence in the way and then there was a ditch. And so I just couldn't get around to the other side of the tree. I took a few pictures and just kind of wondering how it would turn out, but I realized I wasn't gonna keep any of them. Anyway, so those are the 15 reasons. I'll try to put a PDF file or a link to a PDF file down below in the description area. I'm not sure I can. I'll try to do that for you. Hey, so remember to give me a like, share, and a subscribe if you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel. I would really appreciate that. And you can always learn more about bird photography by getting a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. You can get a signed copy of the book on my website and then take a look at the uh, workshops that I do to learn even more about bird photography. There are links to the equipment I use in the description area below, so check those out. And then on the About page of my channel, you can sign up for my monthly newsletter. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I really appreciate it. I will see you next week. Bye.